Year after year, one of the most common topics we deal with on the Autometer Tech line is fuel level gauges. While one of the simplest gauges we make, there are a number of variables that have the potential to trip you up if you're unprepared. We decided to take a road trip to put together some information on the topic. Hopefully, we can help you to get your fuel level gauge installed directly the first time, or sort out one that isn't functioning the way you want it to. Now, for the past hundred years or so, the basic concept of a fuel level gauge and sender hasn't changed. The gauge is, in essence, an ohm meter with an E and an F rather than numbers to indicate resistance. Typically, the sender has a float of some sort attached to a rheostat that varies resistance depending on the position of the float. These can be on an arm or sometimes in a tube. Some are capacitive and have no moving parts at all. Now, regardless of the type, their function remains exactly the same. Autometer makes gauges in a number of different resistance ranges as well as programmable units should the range of your sender not be covered. We've got this old Chevy here to use as a test bed. Everything is easily accessible and out in the open on this truck which makes it the perfect demonstration vehicle. The first step in getting your fuel level gauge working is to determine the resistance range of your sending unit. We need to know what the sender reads at full and at empty to select the proper gauge. Because our Chevy has the sender right behind the seats, we decided the easiest way to do this was to simply remove it and perform a bench test. After disconnecting the fuel line from the pickup tube, we remove the retainer ring and then very carefully pull the sender free from the tank. We don't want to bend the arm during removal as that's a whole other set of issues we don't need. Having a shop towel close by is a great idea as we don't want to drip fuel all over the interior. The resistance range is Autometer has available are 0 to 90 ohm for mid-60s through mid-90s GMs, 0 to 30 for older GMs, 73 to 10 for older Fords and Chryslers, 16 to 158 for more modern Fords, and 240 to 33 which is sort of a universal aftermarket range. Once everything's out, you'll want to put a towel over the hole to keep the cabin from filling up with fumes. With the sender on the bench, we then hook the positive lead of our own meter to the signal terminal and ground out the negative. We slowly move the arm up to full and observe the results. Now, you'll almost never get one that reads exactly what it should, but this particular unit is a nearly perfect 0 to 90 ohms. Based on this information, we select a corresponding autometer gauge. I'm partial to the American Muscle Series, so that's what we'll be using. We put together the wiring by crimping quarter-inch spade connectors to the ends. There are a number of aftermarket wiring harness manufacturers that also offer one-piece connectors for autometer gauges, if you'd prefer to go that route. Now, when running gauge wires, the one place you don't want to take a shortcut is the grounds. I fix more malfunctioning gauges by moving the ground wire than any other single step. Take the extra couple of minutes and ground the gauge directly to the engine. With the wiring out of the way, it's time to reinstall the sending unit into the tank. Just reverse the removal steps and you're in business. In many cases, we'll also add an auxiliary ground wire to the body of the fuel level sender. An insufficiently grounded sender can cause problems with gauge accuracy. We tested this vehicle beforehand and determined this step wasn't necessary, but if you aren't sure whether or not your tank and sender are properly grounded, it's always best to err on the side of caution. So let's look at some common symptoms on fuel level gauges. A poor connection with the signal wire can cause the gauge to read higher than it should or peg out completely as we see here. A bad ground for the sending unit can cause the exact same problem. A poor gauge ground can cause it to read lower than it should or not come off the stop. This holds true for all gauges where higher resistance means a higher reading, such as the GM and newer Fords. On gauges where a lower resistance level means a higher reading, like the Universal Aftermarket and the early Ford and Chrysler, the steps are reversed. Well, I hope this has helped to shed some light on fuel level gauges. As always, thank you for choosing Autometer for your winning ride.